Well, hi there. It's um it's great to be here with you, Tricia. And um, I wanted to say a little bit about what we're doing today. Um, I've been doing research for my book about the transformational impact of being vegan. So often, you know, people might think that becoming vegan is more about deprivation or giving things up. And certainly there are transitions we make as vegans in our lifestyle. But at the same time, you know, for many of us, it's been life-changing, you know, and it's something that has affected our lives in so many positive ways. And also there can be challenges because with any life change, there are sometimes challenges. So we wanna to touch on a little bit of your vegan journey. Um, and I really appreciate, you know, that you're not only sharing this as part of, you know, content to help others, but it's also part of my book research that, you know, eventually will come out in the form of a book that hopefully will help all of us to thrive, you know, with a healthy and compassionate lifestyle. Um, I'd want to invite you, Tricia, share just a little bit about yourself. We'll get to dive in more deeply, but just, you know, a brief introduction. Yeah, definitely. Thank you so much, Dr. Crawford, for asking me um, to speak with you today. I'm always honored. You were a really big part of my journey, so I, mm -hmm. I'm just so grateful for you. Um, I went vegan December 27th of 2021, so you know, just uh, over a year now, and it was very sudden for me. Um, my my husband actually had seen a video a few months prior. And he was like, I think, you know, I don't want to eat animals anymore. And I was like, okay. So we started dabbling and my best friend has been vegan for five years. So we had already had little, um, what I call like dodge shots, little, little things that were kind of picking at us to, uh, take this, this path. And so we really started dabbling. And then, um, on the 27th, I accidentally watched dairy is scary. Um, it was a link um, that I accidentally clicked on. I, I don't think it was an accident now looking back, but at the time it was. And as a mom, it just wrung my heartstrings um, seeing what the dairy industry does to these mother cows and their babies. So from that moment, I got home, we cleaned out the fridge. We hadn't really been drinking um, cow's milk for years because my daughter, who is now 11, had had some health issues that were associated with that, which we're finding is really big nowadays um, associated with cow's milk. So anyways, I, um, you know, we, we cleared out for us. It was very sudden and um, our journey was, was very quick. And so my husband and my five-year-old son and my 11 year old daughter are all vegan. And um, we, I, I own, I still do own an in-home childcare program, which I turned vegan that day as well. Um, the families in my care are non-vegan, but um, it's so wonderful to be able to give them plant-based meals all day long and just plant seeds as much as possible. Um, we got into animal rights activism very quickly. It was just part of my journey. It really helped me uh, feel like I was doing something and contributing to something. And from there, um, I've created a, a new business called Compassion Rising. And I'm sure we'll talk more about that, but that was a piece of um, my journey that's been just so eye-opening. And I, I use it as activism. It's just such a huge piece of activism that really is for child enrichment and families, um, nurturing the innate seed that's already, I believe was with already within us at birth um, mm -hmm. to be compassionate to all living beings. So um, it's been about over a year now and um, you know, just so many beautiful things have happened since then. Yeah. Wow. That's, a, that's amazing. I mean, it sounds like your whole life has changed in the past year and oh, yes. since you made this decision. What was it about that video that really struck you <clears throat> to the point that you made this life change so quickly? Um, I'm a mom and uh, seeing, you know, these mother cows, their bond, um, and since then, I've, I've done some research and the bond between a mother animal of, of really any sort um, is so strong, but especially a cow and her baby. And, um, you know, they, you know, I, I saw the video, I saw them ripping the baby away from her and then the cries, um, hearing a cow cry like that, a mother cow, um, and then watching her chase the baby in this cart. Uh, it was just so 
mind blowing to me, right? Mm -hmm. That we don't see this in these beautiful sentient animals. And it affected me so deeply, uh, especially being a mother, but I don't think you have to be a mom. Uh, I mean, just being human, we're, we're innately compassionate yes. in many ways. Yeah. So just seeing that, um, and it's a five minute video, it's super quick, but wow, it was powerful. Yeah. So as a mother um, who obviously loves my children greatly to know that this is happening all day long, every day, was super uh, impactful for me. Yeah. 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 I'm not even sure if I've seen that particular video, but I can so relate. I was vegetarian before becoming vegan. And, you know, I kind of knew at some level that dairy and the dairy industry and the egg laying industry were also equally cruel, but it really took me a while in watching some videos similar to what you're describing to really get it on a heart and gut level. Like, you know, this is every bit as cruel in some ways more cruel than even, you know, mm. the industry. And, and they end up in the same slaughterhouses ultimately. Right. Um, so. Right. But they're, they're, they endure years of suffering emotionally. Yes. Yes. Um, and that, yes. that was a really big piece of it to see yeah, that to really it's not get that. quick. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And the mother bond, you know, that we just, mm. we don't think about, I think people often think, and maybe even I once thought, oh, you know, milk's just, cows just give milk or something, yes. you know, you don't yes. be involved that actually the milk is for the baby. Um, right. We're so socially conditioned not to think about that. Yes. I always pictured a little old farmer just, <laughs> you know, doing some udders. Like that's what, what we see on, mm. on children's yeah. programs. You know, I own a daycare. I see it all the time and it's just, the social conditioning starts at a young age. So really realizing yes. the truth. Um, and you don't even have to be a mom, a woman to realize yes. like these cows are, are raped and yes. it's the female reproductive system as a woman. Um, yes. It was just, just devastating. So, uh, you know, kudos to that sh very, very short film. Dairy is scary. And uh, I tell people you watch that, you won't drink milk again. Yeah. And it sounds like it just led to your whole journey <clears throat> where you were starting to plant seeds and awaken. This just was, yes. that was, this was the final thing, the turning point that was just, I'm not looking back. This is this absolutely is making as a family. Right. And, and as you started the change, was there anything that you found challenging initially in, in, you know, shifting your diet and lifestyle to be vegan? Was there anything that you found difficult or how did that flow initially? You know, the eating part, no, um, mm -hmm. there are so many options. There are so many things at, I didn't have to go to another store, just the store I normally went to, you just go to a different area and it's all there. There's just so many, um, options and it's so easy in our world today to make the switch as far as going to a plant-based diet. I think where I struggled more was, um, what I call the lifting of the veil, um, it was for me, veganism is spiritual. Um, it's realizing, you know, the principles of ahimsa that we are all one. And I never thought, I mean, I've always loved animals always since I was a young girl. And, you know, my best friend would try to show me videos and I wouldn't want to see that because I don't want to see them being hurt, but I'm over here eating them. The cognitive dissonance is so real. And I can relate to others who do the same thing. Most people love animals but we don't want to see that and so I think the struggle was that connection the connection that the you know this is what's happening this has to happen in order for it to get onto my plate and um it was just really finding community finding you and um, some other people to really rely on that was I think the hardest part um, going through what I, you know, Dr. Claire Mann coins dystopia, if that's mm -hmm. real, um, that was real for me, um, just the realization. But when I knew there was no turning back, I tell people I'd eat rocks before I'd ever, uh, you know, hurt an animal or eat an animal again. Um, so it wasn't about diet for me in any form. Um, I've actually, I love what I eat. I feel so different now that I don't eat suffering. I mean, mm -hmm. when you eat death, there's going to be a 
consequence to that. As we look at our world today, I mean, I think that is very clear. Um, so eating things that are alive and full of life, like plants and fruits, and just, it's just been so fun, like seeing all the food. I, I love cooking anyway. So um, just substituting things and, um, you know, meeting people and networking in a way that, you know, we're, we're trying different food and stuff. So, um, but again, it wasn't about food in any form. I really didn't care what we ate. We just were not eating animals anymore. Yeah. It sounds like just an immediate shift. Mm, very yeah. much. And, you know, had you had any food addictions or anything before becoming vegan that it was hard to let go of? It doesn't sound like it from what you're saying. Um, you know, cheese, I was someone who, um, like dairy wasn't hard. I, I love almond milk. I love, I would like oh. said I was drinking almond milk before I never really liked milk. It just had a weird taste to me and it always hurt my stomach because it's not made for us to be drinking mm -hmm. in the first place. It's made for a baby cow to be drinking. Um, so that wasn't hard. It was the cheese. And, you know, the research I've done now shows the, you know, in large quantities, uh, that, cheese is addictive there's addictive properties within it so a lot of people will say you know when you like talk about being vegan they're like oh I could never let go of cheese and I always empathize and I was like I know I felt the same way um but have you ever heard of Miyoko Shinner <laughs> you know <laughs> uh, I love her I love her products and there's there's yes. always a something else again it came down for me I didn't really care I, I was really able to go without it because I knew where that milk was coming from. I knew the suffering that was endured for me to even eat cheese. And so for me, it was really easy. Um, but I know it's not for a lot of people. And uh, I think that was, that was hard was the, the cheese part of it for sure. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. A lot of people do note that. And I think, you know, for many of us, if we have a strong enough awakening, we're determined to overcome the obstacles, you know, it just something kind of cuts through that cognitive dissonance that you described. And we just become determined to learn how to live this new lifestyle, even, even if it's not apparent immediately, we have to do a little research or we have to discover new options. I right. think when as you say, it's harder and, and so they may need to I don't know, have a little compassion for themselves as they try new things and discover what's going to work that makes this doable for them. Because, you know, it is ultimately doable, but sometimes we have to discover how it's workable for us as individuals. So, right. Yeah. We have to have a purpose too. You know, I think change, people don't want to change. That's the, mm. the biggest thing in society. People don't like change. They like things fast and easy. And so if you don't really have a purpose to change, if someone's mm -hmm. just telling you, you know, go vegan and you have mm -hmm. no, uh, no purpose that affects you personally, it's a lot harder. Um, so yes. for me, that was, that was huge. And, you know, it's amazing because I'm actually, I, I'm, I uh, have a really heavy sugar addiction that I mm -hmm. still struggle with. Um, right now I haven't eaten sugar mm -hmm. in two months and my life mm -hmm. has changed, but mm -hmm. one of the things was chocolate, giving up yes. chocolate, but it was amazing. Cause once I knew if there was milk in my chocolate, I had no problem not eating. It wasn't even a yes. question. It was just yes. wiped yeah. away. The addiction was wiped away from me. And yes. um, I found that completely amazing because there were times, you know, I could not not eat yes. chocolate. And now yes. it's that's it not even a thought at all. Yes. Wow. Well, good for you that you're trying to look at health from all angles. And, and, mm. and I can relate to that. You know, I also love my chocolate, but no milk. <laughs> so. Yeah. There's yes. far better options out there for sure. Definitely. And I want to go back to a couple of things. So the purpose thing we'll definitely dive into more in a moment because that I think is so, I'd love to talk more about that. But since you mentioned Vistopia and, you know, there may be people who listen to this, who might struggle with those kinds of symptoms. Can, can you share, you know, this, I'll just mention briefly, Vistopia is a book that's written by Claire Mann, a psychologist in Australia. And, you know, it's a term that she coined to describe like emotional challenges that vegans might experience when they learn about the truth about animal agriculture. And then on top of it, may not have a supportive or understanding response from people around them who they think of as compassionate people who are just suddenly like, well, don't tell me about that. Mm -hmm. so, you know, she, she coined this term in part because as a psychologist, she didn't want 
the experience of vegans to be pathologized, like given a diagnosis that made it like a pathology, because she views it as a normal existential, at least my understanding of her reading, as a normal existential kind of crisis that vegans often may go through when they really awaken to the suffering inherent in animal agriculture. And so I'm really curious, like, what was that like for you? What did you go through with that? What was your experience of that? Um, exactly that. When mm -hmm. I read her book, I never felt so connected to someone's message. It was like she was explaining everything I was going through. And that gave me a sense of not being alone. Um, I actually got her book on Audible. I listened to it uh -huh. and she narrates it beautifully. Um, so even just hearing her speak it was really um, powerful for me. I, it was a day. I, I just, the whole day I listened to it. I cried. It was extremely powerful for me because she not only makes you feel like you're not alone, but she gives hope at the end. And I went through all of that. Like my family was, my dad is, is from Iran and he, you know, this is tradition for us and this is our foundation. So it was very hard. Mm -hmm. And he's since, you know, become so supportive and, mm -hmm. um, you know, they make vegan meals for us now. Mm -hmm. When my children are there, they, they eat vegan as well. Um, you know, and I couldn't ask for more. And again, I always say everyone on their own time, but in the beginning, when I went through that, my dystopia, which I didn't know was a thing until I was directed to Dr. Claire Mann, um, was so profound. And just having a name for it made it um, really, it was just really helpful to realize like, okay, there's a name for this. It is normal amongst vegans. And um, it was an ex existential crisis, as you said, like it was something that um, I was like, how do I live now? Like how, you know, how do I go on knowing this? Um, so having that was extremely profound. One thing she says at the end, which I absolutely love and I've, I've adopted since is she talks about, um, you know, the collective, uh, unconscious and how, mm -hmm. you know, when you're out and about, if you just say the word vegan, you're pinging on the conscious of people by just saying the word, you mm -hmm. know, they may hear that word in the back of their mind. They don't think anything of it, but then they go out and they see a sign for, mm -hmm. you know, vegan burger, or someone's talking about it. So all these things build up over time mm -hmm. and eventually they too will come to their full awakening. Um, mm -hmm. and she talked about like the pendulum effect and these things gave me hope. Mm -hmm. um, where I was completely hopeless. So, um, you know, I related a hundred percent with, with dystopia and I just think it was such a wonderful resource, uh, for anyone who's in that beginning stages. Yeah. You know, in addition to what you just mentioned, what were some of the ways you have tried to cope or work through that so that you weren't just stuck in like despair or hopelessness? What's helped you to shift out of that or to cope with it if those feelings do come up? Um, community is huge. Um, and they're not gonna come find you. You gotta, mm -hmm. you gotta push through the tears mm -hmm. and the pain and find people who understand. And that's part of the reason why I created Compassion Rising because um, I wanted to create that space for parents uh, like me who felt the, what I felt, but had a safe space to come. At the time, I um, went on to Facebook. I found Marikita Solis's um, Facebook page, Vegan Empowerment, and I was able to then, you know, put a little comment in there about how I was feeling. And so many people reached out and referred me to different books. And actually, that's where I found Dr. Claire Mann was someone's okay. like, read Dystopia. Um, so it really came down to taking action, um, you know and not fighting it. I think you, you got to go through it. You just, yeah. you got to go through the feelings. You got to feel the feelings. You can't, yeah. you know, resist. Giving resistance is not going to help. Um, yes. Crying. I cried a lot. I yes. let my children know, you know, mommy's going through a really hard time knowing what the animals go through, but we're going to get through this, you know, because yeah. I wanted to be strong for my kids. And, um, you know, my husband was definitely a rock through all that, but it really came down to moving, moving, like not just, you know, wallow for a little bit, but keep yes. moving every day and reach out. 
for me, activism was huge. Um, that may not be everyone's cup of tea. I went out and got involved with Anonymous for the Voiceless. I got involved with PETA and DXC, and I was out there, and I still do. Um, those That's my tribe, my family. I met so many amazing vegans who are out there fighting for the animals, and um, I'm able to be myself with them. Um, so that was huge. Uh, whatever whatever works you know and then my idea with compassion rising came and then i started putting all my all my effort and stuff into that because i i want to make a difference through that as well so i really think it comes down to taking action and you know a lot of people go back from being vegan because they feel isolated but if you reach out we're out here we're waiting we're yes. you know we're supportive you got to find your tribe for sure yeah yeah i heard several great insights in what you just shared you know, one was to allow the feelings because they are valid, normal feelings when we learn about pain and suffering, you know, and things that are so difficult as what happens to animals and and beyond that, the larger impact on the planet and, you know, yes. covering. So it's normal to have the feelings and, you know, to allow them. And yet at the same time, as you're saying, to not be stuck alone with them, you know, to find support systems of people who understand. So you found vegans through Facebook groups and through other means. Um, and you're, you know, always learning and reading. So you understand what you're feeling and how to cope with it better, mm -hmm. found community. And then on top of it, you found purpose because you realize like, okay, maybe I can't change all this overnight, but what can I do with the gifts I have? And so part yes. and your activism. And then the other part is discovering this new business or um, community platform that you're creating. Um, and so maybe you could share a little bit about Compassion Rising. How did that come about and, and how did that unfold? And what is that for listeners to be able to know more about it? Sure. Um, so Compassion Rising is a compassion-based uh, child enrichment program for families as well as child care programs. And I'll go a little bit into it, but where it came from was, you know, I, I own an in-home child care program. I transitioned it to vegan immediately. And with that, uh, I was like, this isn't enough. Like, I felt like I got to do more. And I started questioning where do vegan families take their children? Like mm -hmm. how devastating must it be to have to drop your child off somewhere that is completely against your morals and values. Mm -hmm. And so that was where it, it sparked is what I say. It sparked from that being like, I got to offer um, mm -hmm. some kind of plant-based implementation into child cares, whether they're vegan or not, um, mm -hmm. you know, somehow get it so they can have the resources and tools to offer plant-based diets to families um, so they can do both. And that would up their revenue too, right? So I was like, well, it ups their revenue because there's people looking for this. And that was how it started. And then um, it's just grown. I met Peter Goldstein from We Did It.Health through an, a live stream. And I uh, set up a meeting with him. And he then introduced me to who to Trevor Benarji and the Freedom Switch Group, who's my my team and mm -hmm. my business coach today. And together over the past, you know, nine, 10 months, we've created Compassion Rising and it's grown not only from what I call compassion based diet guidance, um, but eco living guidance, um, psychology, which you're a part of my platform. Mm -hmm. I'm so grateful. You were what you're the first person I reached out to because um, you were someone I found that really helped me through my dystopia. Um, but we also have meditation and yoga for children. We have a, a community platform. It's kind of like a social media, Facebook, but you know, not everyone likes Facebook and a lot of people aren't on it, but yeah. this is a place solely for vegan families or vegan child care providers or people that are wanting to offer uh, plant-based meals and, you know, want to find community to come, to voice how you're feeling, to, to create groups, to speak to one another, to provide strength and hope to one another. You know, some of us are further down the road than others. So we can help those like me. When I started, mm -hmm. I would have loved to have a space like this to come into and feel safe. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, Facebook can get kind of ugly sometimes. Um, mm -hmm. And it can get really negative and really depressing. And so I've removed myself um, many times from Facebook. I use it for marketing, but Compassion Rising was is, is a place that, you know, I'll be offering, it, it, we just launched 
uh, as you know, in January. So we're still in the baby phases, but mm -hmm. we will have a uh, group like five week group sessions. We will have one-on-one -on -one coaching with myself. Um, there's going to be live streams with our experts, which are one of them where every month we'll interview an expert and have that as video content. Um, we have a think equal curriculum, which is an empathy based curriculum mm -hmm. founded by Leslie Udwin out of the UK. It's just this beautiful, um, platform and resource for not only families she has a family program and then she has a child care preschool program which is a 30-week mm -hmm. program it comes with beautiful resources books um, I'm actually a certified teacher I did her certification mm -hmm. course and became a certified teacher through think equal so that's going to be something I'll implement on the platform read alongs and things like that so it's just really a safe space and our experts offer free resources as well as discounts to their services. Um, so we have not only you, but Dr. Lee Ettinger, who's a vegan pediatric nephrologist. We have Angie Ringler, who owns Tangi. You know, it's eco-friendly, plastic-free uh, products where she offers discounts. We have Dr. Mm -hmm. William Tuttle, for mm -hmm. goodness sakes, you know, the renowned Dr. Mm -hmm. William Tuttle um, and, and many more um, experts. So we are just growing and it's just become, um, it's just this amazing thing. And like I said, we're in the baby phases, but um, we did a launch and we're, we're moving along swiftly. So. Yeah. Wow. Oh, it's amazing. And it's amazing too, how it has unfolded over the last, you know, as you say about nine months, because just think of like, you know, a year and a half ago, you had no idea what was going to be happening. And here you are, you know, it's mind blowing. It's, yeah. it gives me goosebumps. It's mind yeah. blowing. Yeah. And so I, I wonder too, you know, so here, you know, you're bringing your passion into the world to help others, you know, help families, help parents, you know, which is a big part of helping us create a more compassionate world, you know, sustaining and nurturing that natural compassion that we have as children and letting it show up, not just as a value, but in how we live our lives, you know, as a behavioral, you know, way of being in the world, choosing to buy things that are compassionately created versus things that come from suffering, as you noted right. earlier. So that's right. beautiful. And I'm, you know, I'm honored to be, you know, part of that. Um, Thank you. You know, and, and so as you're mentioning this, like one of the things you're speaking to is that becoming vegan, you know, was, it had its emotional challenges as you had to face some difficult things. Um, and it also has had some positive transformations for you and that you found a purpose to contribute. Like if we discover that there's suffering in the world, you know, and it really touches our heart, then we can try to figure out what can we do to help ease that suffering or create a more just, compassionate, healthy world. So I love what you're doing. And, you know, could you mention anything else about how being vegan has affected you positively in terms of your emotions and spirituality? Because it sounds like there has been, you described it sort of as an awakening. I'm just curious to know more about that part of it. Oh my gosh, it's changed my, my world my aspect, uh, my perspective on life. Uh, it's, I can't even like really put it into words, the, the profound changes that have happened um, that I personally feel were meant to. I felt mm. this was my journey and it took, you know, this long for me to get to this point, but I've arrived and now there's work to be done. Um, and so for me, everything's changed from my health, of course, you know, from just feeling um, like a lightness about me handling things, uh, the clarity I have with handling a five-year-old son and 11-year-old daughter, I handle things so much differently. Um, I, I used to have anxiety. Um, that's gone. I, I, I'm not anxious. You know, I do obviously have sad times. I, I've disconnected myself from watching like videos and stuff because I know what happens to the animals. I don't need mm -hmm. to see that. So mm -hmm. for me, it's, that's, that's a, having awareness, huge. Yes. I used to not have yes. awareness of anything I was doing. I was just unconsciously walking through life. Mm -hmm. And now there's awareness with every single thing in my life down to, you know, not screaming at my kids, you know, things like that, the little things. Um, so the, the change has been profound <clears throat> and yes, it was hard, 
But I truly believe like any awakening has to have suffering, right? It's the yin and the yang. You mm-hmm. don't appreciate it if they're, if you don't understand, you know, what you're fighting for. And yes. so, you know, there's, there's just, it's just been life altering. I mean, yes. like I said, there's no, there's no like words to really yes. describe it. And I've talked to other vegans that have had this profound shift mm-hmm. and you live life differently when you have a purpose that is lifelong, like this is forever. It's never going to stop. Um, and so, and then to raise my kids that way, to raise my kids with helping them find their purpose and raising them on a spiritual level that is, you know, parallel to Ahimsa and animals, like the change mm-hmm. in them is just profound too. So it's just, uh, it's just mind blowing, honestly. Yes. Well, I can see that. And just, you know, and, and I can see too that, you know, you were, as you said, you loved animals, you were a compassionate person before, but this sort of awakening, you know, with the dairy is scary and, and then everything else that came along with that, it sounds like your compassion just opened up on a deeper level for all living beings, you know, right. Including those that we often dismiss or didn't think about, you know, mm-hmm. before plant-based or vegan. Right. Bugs. I mean, we are all about like not squishing bugs, you know, yes. like I was, I would always never like try to step on a bug anyway, but now you see them and you're like, mm-hmm. they have energy. They're living their lives. They're, they're mm-hmm. sentient. They're doing things in their own little yes. worlds. You know, so it's down to the tiniest things and um, it's reflected in my kids very much. So, you know, the way that they are with, with everything in their lives too. And realizing it's taken me time, you know, you get very angry at the humans that are causing the suffering, but realizing that um, they've suffered and there's Mm -hmm. a reason that they're doing, you know, their journey is different from mine. And there's a reason they're doing the work that they're doing, whether it's in the slaughterhouses or whatever. Um, But having that awareness as well, um, when before it's easy just to hate people. I mean, that's where we are in the world is full of hate. And so when you have compassion towards all living beings, when you realize like we're all connected, things change on a, on a very, very drastic level for sure. No, that's huge. And I, and I just feel that. And, you know, when I hear your compassion, you know, it it inspires me and probably inspires others to, you know, want to bring out the best sides of themselves, you know, whereas if we feel judged or we feel, you know, looked down upon or we're caught up in division I don't know we just it just doesn't have that impact you know to create the change you know so I love how you're you're showing up with compassion and living your values and discovering thank you you support others and and doing the same right what you're doing it's made me stronger um Mm. you 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 know we go through life worrying about and we're, we're conditioned to worry about what others think about us. How many likes mm-hmm. did we get? What are people saying? And that has gone away from me. And what a, God, what a relief to not care what anybody thinks because my purpose and living in my truth is grander than anything anyone could say. And you'll we'll always be criticized. I teach my kids, especially my 11 year old daughter. It doesn't matter what you did. Like I say, mm-hmm. mother Teresa has, has mm-hmm. critics, mm-hmm. you know, so we'll all always be criticized. So why not just live in your truth and, and fight for your purpose? Cause you're going to be criticized anyway, um, no matter what. So it's very important to, and then you're building that tough skin, right. Moving forward. Um, you know, not everyone's going to like what I have to say. I've, I've had vegans that come at me that are like, you know, your message is very human centric. We need to be focusing on the animals. And it's like, well, the people that are hurting the animals mm-hmm. feel that they're separate from the animals. If we all mm-hmm. felt that we were one, maybe they wouldn't be hurting the animals. But then you mm-hmm. have some vegans that are separating us as well. Mm-hmm. So now we have infighting. And mm-hmm. for me, I mean, everyone has their own way. I'm, I'm not here to judge anyone, but I just, I just do my own thing and, and yeah. hope that I'm making a difference at the end of each day. Yes. No, I love that. And, you know, we do each have a way we can contribute. Um, 
we each have gifts, we each have passions, we each have a style that we bring, you know, and so there's like mm -hmm. all of us um, to all be working towards a common purpose, you know, of a more compassionate, right. cruelty-free world, you know, for animals and all living beings. So absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, as we're wrapping up, what is the vision that you hold for yourself and your contribution and the world? You know, and I know that's kind of a big question. <clears throat> just what do you, what do you hope to see? You know, what, what are you hoping that can be created? So it's kind of, you know, sometimes we have these visions and they're so big that the self-doubt comes in and is like, you can't do that. But then you think of like the people who've changed the world, like Gandhi and Martin mm -hmm. Luther King, and they were, they were born babies, just like us. Mm -hmm. They were nobodies at one point. So I try to just focus on every day, but my vision, especially through Compassion Rising, is for it to go international and for it to be something that is a requirement, something that is a norm to teach children that are in preschool and in childcare programs, compassion towards all living beings. So when they get into the government school systems, they already are holding this compassion, which they were born with, but now they've nurtured it and they get in there and they don't want to eat animals. They already know the truth. And that starts with the parents because you can't just go straight to the kids. So we're having to, you know, really get to the core and the innate seed that's within the parents that's far more conditioned out. Mm -hmm. So my, my vision is to get to the children at a young age, yes. you know, yes. and um, really just raise the bar on what I call, like I told you, I'm writing a book called compassion revolution. Um, mm -hmm. It seems so simple, but it's not so simple to be compassionate. Um, we're, yes. we're taught to hate. We're taught to be, um, you know, separate and to hate this nation and hate that nation. And so it's not easy. It is simple. Um, it is simple to yes. show acts of compassion throughout the day, even if it's stepping over a bug that you might yeah. step on, you know, mm -hmm. little things. So in a nutshell, it's really getting to children. And it's amazing. A lot of kids are vegan and their parents aren't. Mm -hmm. And I always find that fascinating because their parents are like, oh, my kid's vegan. You know, they don't want to. It's like, isn't there a reason for that? Like, yes, you see yes. some kind of mm -hmm. correlation. I had a lady tell me the other day, um, she was, oh, I, you know, I, I knew your daughter was vegan. I didn't know the whole family was vegan. I was like, yeah, we're, we're all on the same, we're all on the yeah. same wavelength here, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so you see children are definitely waking up. So we need to nurture that seed. And that's my goal is to just mm -hmm. get to the children and hopefully the children can then affect their parents what what better yes. advocate to get yes. to their to get to these adults than their own children yeah no that's amazing so well yeah. we'll make sure to have um you know a, a way to contact you in the notes um from this video yeah. so you know make sure that that is in the description so they can contact yeah. you and maybe just say briefly how people would reach you I bet it will be in writing as well um, right it's just compassion rising uh, dot us okay. and then my information's on there my website or you awesome. can directly message me through the website itself um, in the contact us section but um, I'm on Facebook okay. just compassion rising LinkedIn compassion rising it's awesome. it's all me yeah okay well great I love it well any final thoughts as we're wrapping up our time together for the interview? Um, I'm just so grateful for you. I hope you are um, understand how big of a piece you are um, through my journey. You've helped me, and I'm sure you're going to help, and you have helped many others, um, especially through the you know the psychological aspects of this. And I'm just so grateful for you for being a part of my panel and for believing in me and my mission. And um, I'm just you hold a very special place in my heart. Aww. So I just want you to know how grateful I am for you. So Aww. thank you for all the work you do. Well, thank you. And, and thank you for what you're doing. You are such an inspiration to me. So thank you. So wishing you um, many blessings and um, we'll close for today. <laughs> yes, I love that. Thank you, Dr. Crawford. Okay. See you soon.